So, yep, Halo is uh, based on the hit video game from the thousands. It was it was said to have revolutionized uh, first person shooters on the console. Basically, what Doom was for the PC, uh, Halo was for the original Xbox. It spawned this huge franchise, uh, like uh, five other video games across like three different uh, console generations books, uh, other uh, live-action short films, anime spinoffs, and now we get the live-action series that has been kind of in development hell since the original game came out, or, or at least since uh, Halo 2 came out on the Xbox. It was originally going to be uh, directed and show run by Neil Blomkamp. That was kind of his next big announcement after mm-hmm. District 9 came out. And for one reason or another, the movie eventually just got stuck in development hell. Mm-hmm. And now we have uh, this live action series, which is produced by uh, Steven Spielberg and uh, Amblin Entertainment, starring uh, Pablo Schreiber, who you may know from uh, Den of Thieves, uh, 13 Hours, the FX show Lights Out, and uh, Orange is the New Black, playing the titular Master Chief or John 117. And this is kind of taking a story that's uh, in an alternate timeline uh, between the games. Like this is, as far as I can tell, this isn't connected. You have characters from the games uh, returning into this show, but the story, it's not connected so far based off of this first episode. Mm. Mm. All right. Dust? Um, you're mostly, I mean, he's, he's basically correct in the summarization. Yeah. Many fans at this point has called this the silver timeline based on the mm-hmm. team that's a company chief named uh, the team silver uh who was not in the original um not in the original series in the books uh, mm-hmm. there were a couple spartans he worked with pre beforehand but they were called they're later called blue team but for one reason or another um they got taken out or put into cryo sleep or whatever or injured so heavily that they're just not usable leaving basically chief by the time halo one's around to basically be in the last Spartan standing, last Spartan two, I should say, standing. Mm-hmm. So, this is pre that it's still when reaches around, so mm-hmm. to speak. So this is early into his days. Yeah, um, yeah, because because the game because in the games, uh, the first game picks off picks up right after the fall of Reach. Basically, yeah, after the fall of Reach, uh, which was a in the books was a like months long battle. And took like trench, trenched in warfare while people were trying to be evacuated and Spartans mm-hmm. were being used as ground forces. And it was an ultimate slaughter for them to get the AI out and all that crap. Anywho, mm-hmm. uh, this show has nothing to do with any of that. <laughs> uh, yeah, this, yeah, this show, uh, I was kind of interested to see where the show was going because the first like couple minutes of it it is kind of setting up this uh this like normal conflict between like government and rebels and then all of a sudden the covenant show up and Mm. something i that i think is a positive on the show i like the design of the covenant i think uh the money provided by uh by uh, amblin is used to good effect the every one of the covenant and the creature design looks really good and they show that Covenant ain't fucking around. They don't care how old, how young, how unarmed you are. They will fuck your shit up. It's like three seconds and like children's bodies are flying on screen. It, the screen is painted red by the Covenant. Yeah, they, uh, the brutality of the Covenant is probably one of the main positives of this. They do not mm-hmm. sugarcoat. They do not look away. They don't pull like a, a Disney plus or kind of thing where it's like oh when the violence happens we'll have to see the only time they go nah, off they scene is them. like yeah <laughs> no nah, they no nah, this show said fuck them kids basically they really did yeah <clears throat> um the first uh, the first episode is really just based on these rebels and characters and then by the time the spartans arrive it's mostly too late uh mm-hmm. most of the survivors are basically screwed uh <laughs> And then it follows a set of characters, one the one the survivor named Quan, and the Master Chief after they pick up a mysterious object that the Covenant was looking at on uh, Magical, which was the planet they were on. Uh, mm. And by the end of the first episode, loyalties are tested because they don't understand what pacing is about, and they don't. <laughs> uh, and now Master Chief has to figure out the secrets of this uh, this object with the help of Quan and 
and I and I'm kind of scratching my head, okay. going, "What does yeah. this have to do with Halo?" Yeah, spoilers. This kind of at least off of this first episode, yeah. which like most pilots are rough. Uh, yeah. Most pilots aren't really. Uh, a lot of shows they're still figuring out where they are by the time six episodes comes around. Yeah. So I'll give it that. However, I feel like Halo, it's a very simple story. It's a very simple mythology. It, it's yeah. good versus evil. It's its humanity versus alien. And I feel like this show, it's overcomplicating a very simple narrative just to drive six or nine episodes I think they announced are going to be in this season. And a season two. They've already announced before this is even finished, <laughs> they've signed up a season two. Mm. They haven't even <laughs> seen fan reaction. Uh, already. We're going all in on a season two. I, I mean, by all accounts, I've heard uh, on IMDb, it's sitting at like a seven out of 10 on the options off the episode, which um, it's, like, it's um, like a six or a seven, oh. honestly, for being, yeah, honest. which, which is a, which is a little generous. Uh, I do think that the show it's playing, it's taking a lot of uh, plot elements from stuff like the Mandalorian, which, of course, big, big motherfucker in a goddamn suit of armor with a helmet <laughs> and uh, a young kid that are flying around the galaxy, which, OK, it's a very simple story, I guess. I I'm curious to see where this show goes. I, I do think that um, uh, there are some odd casting decisions. I think for the mm -hmm. most part, the acting is all right, except for one for one actor i think is really flat and that's a uh, olive gray who plays a uh, miranda keys on the show who is a character yeah. in halo 2 and 3 uh -huh. oh. um um yeah go ahead um so you said so the look of the show is for the most part pretty good the design of the ships the special yeah. effects yeah y yeah this yeah the ship design the creature design of the covenant the uh the uh suit design of uh, master chief and all the spartans all the equipment is pulled straight from the games. You get a lot of Easter eggs from the games, like uh, the sounds the weapons make, like the charging plasma pistol, which was my shit when I was playing Halo. Uh, you get the recharging shield at some point in this. Hmm. But uh, but a lot of Easter eggs, eggs do not a good show make. So, yeah. So, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Oh, that was just going to be my yeah, next I, question about how many references do they do to the games and to the books and other things like that. So, um, Nick, would you like me to uh, talk, oh, take the yeah, on this? Yeah, go ahead. go ahead. I, th okay. I think you've probably read more of the books. Than I've, I know someone who has, and they filled me all in on that stuff. I haven't actually read, read them. Um, mm -hmm. So one of the main Easter eggs on there is, uh, like I said, uh, if you've ever played the games, for the most part, Master Chief is the only Spartan. Uh, aside from the fall mm -hmm. of Reach, he's pretty much the last Spartan too. Most of them are killed off in Reach, or we're in such pain, uh, such they're out of the way. So by the way, first game goes around for most people, they're like, oh, well, he's the last Spartan. And like, well, technically there were there were Spartans before then, and Silver Team is this new team that's added to him. Most likely references to characters in the extended lore, but they're their own people. They have no connection to anything else. Um, Miranda Keys shows up, although the moment I saw her, I went, "That's not Miranda Keys. That that can't." I know what she looks like. She's in mm -hmm. she's in two and three. Uh, I and then I had to look, and then you see her her father later, uh, Commander Keys, who is in the first game, and they're like, "That's also not Commander Keys." He, I know what he looks like. That's not what he looks like in the game. So like okay, you're already changing uh, actors, and you've made them uh, African American in descent mm -hmm. for this um, universe. Okay, uh, Miranda uh, is the head of um, is the head of the Spartan Spartan Ops, and also um, AI construction. Uh, one of the main things some people who've read the books will also notice that is uh, the head of Oni, which is the uh, basically the intelligence network for uh, the UNC. She's yeah, played um, by yeah, an um, Indian yeah, actress. Uh, I can't remember her name. Oh, uh, I had the IMDb up for, mm -hmm. for a second. So, it's, uh, uh, yeah, the head of Oni is played mm -hmm. by uh, 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 Shabana Osby. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So the the woman you who, said who, who's in stuff like Twenty Four and all. Um, so I got it yeah. pulled up right here. So you said uh, Olive Gray is the one playing Miranda Keys here. Yes. Um, and then her father. Yeah, sorry, not Miranda the, Keys. She, no, she's playing Hall Halsey. 
No, no. Oh. Natasha Methalone is playing uh, Doctor Catherine Halsey, who is yeah. the who was the creator of the Spartans in the yeah. in the books and the games, and is the basis for the AI of uh, Cortana, Cortana, who is kind of like your AI companion. Oh, who, okay. A weird yes. thing they they which is weird because they brought because uh, they have Jen Taylor, they do. who does the voice and mocap for Cortana in the games, and she's listed as playing Cortana in the show. Yeah, which. It, which Halsey is supposed to be the basis of that character. She is. There are also other AIs made before her. She is just the mm -hmm. most advanced. Um, the reason she also is more advanced, the most advanced, is because she's um, Halsey used her genetic DNA as a basis when creating the AI, so it was able to function within a much bigger frame, uh, frame which allowed her to uh, afford more um, processing power and other things in that nature. Also, in this show, for some reason. Cortana is like a living being, like a clone or something. She's just in a vat. I don't know what that's about. She's literally an AI in the games, and she's blue, and I don't understand why. And additionally, uh, the, the head of Oni, which I was trying to get to, is uh, the character is Margaret. I forget her last name. But in the books, that is correct. She is the head of Oni, <clears throat> and she's also kind of a villain in the books. She's kind of a very cruel person who is very ruthless. And the only person who's ever really able to kind of push back against her it has been Catherine Halsey. Yeah. However, if you ever, if you watch the show and you didn't know any of that, uh, it's extremely generic because she's basically telling her, oh, uh, you guys rescued a ship undamaged. Well, I'll just put it with our collection. And I'm like, this is before the fall of Reach. They are anxious to get their hands on alien technology. And if it's as spared as possible, even more of a boon. Why are you just like throwing your hands up as if that doesn't matter? Oh, you created an AI in the Spartan program that, that helped everyone else. But really, we're putting you in this facility. Don't make me take things. I'm like, that is not how that worked in mm -hmm. the games or in the books. And, and Halsey, in even the games, would not have tolerated the way that she is talked to in this TV show. She was a actually strong character that mm -hmm. would have been like, who do you think you're talking to? If it wasn't for my program, Earth would be screwed. We'd all be screwed. I created most of these AIs that allow your Oni to even run. You don't get to tell me what to do as if I'm just a sub rank. Hmm. So I don't know what is going on in this show. Although I do, because apparently the show winner has never played the games and doesn't know anything about Halo. Uh so and you can actually look that up. He said that in an interview. Yeah, I think I yeah I think I heard him. Yeah, read that uh, yeah snippet of that interview and the article there. Um, so, that, so that ultimately gets to my question. Go ahead. Oh, I just um, I just had a thought about mm -hmm. like uh, in yeah. with Cortana. So I know there was a lot of complaints mm -hmm. about the way she looked uh, in the like in the trailer. Yeah. Um, so now seeing the pilot, do you? Is, he does not show up. Okay, she doesn't show up in the pilot. Okay, she doesn't show up as as in her form. Um, so the when it comes to the CGI is mixed. The CGI is mixed when it comes to uh, the design of the elites, design of Covenant is very good. They mix practical effects and CGI looks very good. But when it comes to certain effects like chief jumping or there's a scene where he throws his gun away and it looks so bad mm. uh there's some cgi that is not polished so it's a bit of mix of what was polished and what was not what is expensive and what is not there's also in addition to this one episode they've also headed a human that is part on the covenant side now and she's there for some reason that we have yet to understand why and that leads to my, kind of my question here. They fundamentally changed a lot of relationships, aspects, and are going in a direction with this series that is very overcomplicated and requires you some bit of knowledge of Halo to both the books and the games to even understand what's happening. Yeah. To even get a, a, just a general idea of the context of what's happening. But you're changing so much about what Halo is and losing a lot of the great simplicity that the games had. Mm. Who is the show for? So, because if this is for if this is for Halo the hardcore Halo fans, they're going to be upset at the changes, and they're not going to like all the things that they have changed and the things they've less made less subtle. And then for people who are brand new, 
you're going to be like, what's the, what, I don't understand what's going on. Mm. Why, what, who's this? What's, why are they talking to the characters like this? Isn't someone in the games kind of different? It doesn't make any sense to me, kind of. So it's in this weird middle. With a lot of these mm-hmm. characters, is it like mm-hmm. kind of we're seeing these characters at square one of their story? In a lot of ways, in a lot of ways, um, based on the timeline of where it should be, Chief has passed his training. Okay. And he's early on he's early to mid in his Spartan training. This is before the fall of Reach. This is where the Covenant uh, Covenant's been coming in. So he should be already midway through his his journey, or at least in his ops. He should he's had experience where he's the chief at this point, but he's still relatively early in his campaign. He would still be working with the crew, or the crew that he had worked with is 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 lowering because they're losing Spartan twos. There was only so many at this point. There's they're losing more and more with the progression of this war. Um Miranda Keys, who is the daughter of Jake Keys, or I believe his name is Jacob. Uh, he's just Commander Keys, anyways, in the game. They have this. Okay, Nick, what's going on, man? Oh shit! Uh, yeah, sorry about that, guys. Uh, restart my uh, computer real quick. So, where were we? Uh, so we were basically discussing at this point all these different characters, where they're at in the story, and I'm trying to explain that this is. Early enough where Chief is kind of, he's still in the middle of working with other Spartans, but mm. it's before the fall of, before even Reach gets invaded at the moment, so it's fairly early in the war, mm. but before, like, I'm going to be honest in the lore-wise, this is before, like, this would be where following another character would actually be better. Hmm. I, you would kind of, sk- like, lore-wise... I don't understand what who this series is for because you're seeing these characters at different viewpoints. If this was like an anthology of following the careers of different people throughout mm-hmm. the Halo universe and being an expansive look at all these different characters, and Chief is one of these characters, but it's all mm-hmm. these encompassing, that I would understand. Mm-hmm. But it really doesn't seem like that. It seems like they're setting up a few just char- few characters they're going to follow. And it wants to be two different things. It wants to be with Quan. She wants to have this revenge story slash I want to get back at things, which I'm going to be honest, Quan's already starting to bug me because she doesn't make any sense on her actions. I understand she's angry, but there are grown adults. And why are they handling this in the manner that they're handling? Already in the first episode, I asked a couple questions. And Nick, I wonder if you can answer me this. Hmm. Um... Do you remember in when the fight it when it, the first fight opened and their uh, her dad the general was on the uh, the machine gun thing on the on the warthog? Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah, I remember, I remember he that. shot at the remember how he shot at the elites and didn't kill them, but then later mm-hmm. the chief picked up the same weapon and killed three of them. What oh, changed the about that gun? gun? Yeah, what changed <laughs> about that minigun? Character using it, I guess. Yeah. Um, secondly, uh, the character what, using it and Easter egg in the game because you yeah, can pick sure. up like uh, turrets right, and right, Halo right. Two and but, on. But I don't like. Uh, additionally, at one point, uh, they decide uh, Quan that they ask Quan Miranda Keys is like, "Hey, could you tell the other people on the other colonies that this rebellion is kind of going on? That we need to kind of staffle this because the Covenant is coming and we need to work together as a unit." And she goes, "No." My father was fighting for freedom. Screw you. I'm mad. I'm going to lie. Yeah, even it, though we have edits yeah, to the it's contrary. A, yeah, it's a turn that makes no sense. Yeah. Which I which I don't know if it's a, it's a thing in the script. I don't know if it's something that got cut. Or if, yeah. you know, the script is just not that great. Which it's it really isn't. Oh, no. Right. Um, and also, there's one big thing that is separating mm-hmm. this from the lore of Halo. The biggest thing, yeah. in fact. And... Master Chief, he kind of has the same rule as characters like Judge Dredd. You do not take the helmet oh, off. Oh god, yeah. I was I was waiting to get to this moment a little later, but yeah. It's already episode it's, 1. Yeah, yeah, episode 1 you take the helmet off. And it's For no not, reason. And and in the in something like the Mandalorian where that's used to set up character growth. That's used as a as a tool for a character development. 
here it just happens, I guess, because Pablo Schreiber wanted some face time. Mm. Um, the point of Master Chief is that you don't, and most Spartans for the most part, Spartans for the most mm-hmm. part, try never to remove their helmet, A, because it has a combat disadvantage, and B, Spartans are kind of mostly, na- like, are supposed to be semi-nameless. They mm-hmm. There's even a protocol in the games. Spartans are never considered KIA. They're always listed as MIA. That way, so no nowhere in the history books would ever say any Spartan died in combat. Even if they actually do, they're never listed. It's a way to keep the mystery of a Spartan, that they're more than just they're the pinnacle of human beings. That they're, they're almost these mythic beings. So how does he do as Master uh, Chief? Like the the late act of Apollo. I think he does. He's he's he fine. fine. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. He, uh, of all the faults in this, none of them are on the actors. Uh, yeah. I think Pablo Schreiber he does a good job providing the voice yeah. for Master Chief, and I'm guessing some of the physicality. Yeah. Hmm. A lot of it is his height as well and his body frame. He fits Master Chief yeah. body wise, but he's it a, is very jarring. It is very jarring when you hear his voice and it's not Master Chief, and you're like, whoa. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty jarring hearing uh, the voice, his Pablo Schreiber's voice come out of uh, the Master Chief shoot suits. Because I guess I was, I was really accustomed to hearing uh, uh, the actor in the video games. I'm trying to remember the uh, uh, his name. Uh, it, it was weird not hearing Steve Downs voice the Master Chief. Yeah. yeah. Um, so does like Paul Schreiber, who is, I mean, he's six, five, by the way. So he's a big guy. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. and so does he like pitch his voice? Does he like go deeper or does he do something like, 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 not really. Okay. He just talks normally. Not really. It, it, it's basically his normal voice. Yeah. Okay. He, um, additionally, the chief in this series is if they were going by books, he's also not very accurate to chief books or video game chief. Video game chief, mm-hmm. he, a video game chief, he's very like stoic, but he has one liners. So he might throw. He's so like dry when he throws something out. It, he's almost ironically funny, where they'd be like, "Hey, you any good mm-hmm. at clearing LZ?" So he'd be say something like, "On occasion," yeah, or something like that. He'd have like one line where it's he's not trying to be funny, but he yeah, does have he, a very he, dry it, sense of humor. Yeah, it, yeah. The character in the game, he's not. Uh, contrary to what you would expect from a character like that, he's not robotic. He he has a very dry sense of humor, especially in his interactions with Cortana, which makes and them great. Here, I, and here, I feel like they're going, they're trying to do that more. Like they try to, but it's in bits that I think fall kind of flat. Yeah. Uh, additionally, they kind of treat him more like he's just a a complete machine. I I am mm. I am doing this in the books. He actually did Which, talk a bit. He's a lot. Has a bit more of a personality, very similar to the games. But he does have moments of introspection. If there were moments mm-hmm. where, while he was silent and we could hear his thoughts, and he would feel like feel what he's kind of thinking, that would alleviate a lot of this. Because there's a lot of theme moments in this episode where he's just sitting there, or he's just standing, and he'll look in a general direction with no body language, no real showing, and he's just kind of like. Mm. you're like what's he doing what's he thinking mm. if you're gonna have a character in full armor you have to you have to exaggerate with body language <clears throat> yeah and that's something that is and that's something that's done so well in the mandalorian mm-hmm. as, even when uh peter pascal is not physically in the suit the stunt actor it, it, it is nailing the performance with just the body language alone mm-hmm. and that's something that i think is a little bit lacking here mm. it 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 is and uh, Chief works with p- other characters because he's a great soundboard off. He works great with mm-hmm. Cortana because Cortana and him really developed this really good friendship and even later on something a bit more complicated. And that's it's really interesting to see how their relationship develops over time. His relationship with other soldiers and his relationship with other people and that he, he is a bit closed off with other people because he didn't know how to react with other people, but he does still make attempts. He does still have. Mm-hmm. He does have a bit of dry humor. He does try to interact with people. He does try to calm people down. There's a legitimately a moment where Quan is like, "Oh man, this, I'm totally screwed," and I'm like, "Chief, why are you just walking away?" Like, 
he would at least been like, come on. Or he would say something like that, like, we need to get you to a, to this, a safe LZ mm. for pickup. Mm-hmm. Or something like that. He would be sending like that, and then he'd tell the, the other Spartans, like, on me, secure, secure survivor, en route. Mm. And something like that. Okay. Um, but he's right. just like, nah, we're just going to leave the survivor. <laughs> Um. All right. So, um, I mean, many, that could and that could be a thing, and that could be a thing of developing the character. It's like he starts out pretty robotic, like and then slowly late as the show goes on, to just start doing that. If we wanted to really develop, you know what? Main, the main problem with the show is the main problem with the show is this is the first time that Halo's had a live action TV series that has been mm-hmm. a long form TV series. How it's many episodes shorts. is this supposed to be? Probably nine to ten. Uh, I, th- I, th- I think they, yeah, IMDb has nine episodes listed, so it's nine hours basically. If we're going by the length mm-hmm. of the first episode, which was yeah, nine. and yeah, and something I think Paramount should have followed like the Amazon or the Disney Plus model. They should have given us at least like the first three episodes. Yeah, because I think I, uh, with this show, the way the pacing is, I think you would have gotten more sense of a uh, sense of what the show is off of three episodes or something like what Peacock did with Bel Air. Mm. True. True. Okay. I'll, I'll give it that. I'm much better having like a, a good three episodes, get a good arc, and then follow up with the next mm-hmm. three, and then the next three. So can, that seems like a much yeah, better. I, so can you even make a judgment on this pilot episode that much? Of I can. I can base it on the music. I can base it on its for what I see of character wise, and I can base it on what the tone they're trying to set for it. Can I base it on the entire series? No, I'll finish the entire series and I'll give you my opinion mm-hmm. at that point. Oh, because okay. I'm go- trying to be fair with it. At, so you are. I think it's interested yeah, in. You are interested in finishing this. It's this is a first live action TV series. I'm not. It's like I'm pointing out these issues with it because to me, these are issues outside of the money pumped into it. Mm-hmm. The costume design is great. They really nail the aesthetics of it, but it's missing parts of it so far. Now that could change over time, but there is something that unfortunately they have to reconcile with the how much they've changed to do something like this. There's an inherent issue with this series, and that's this is the first time we've had a live series of it for an extended period, and yet they've they're changing it in ways where hardcore audience, hardcore and people who know the story aren't. But it's too complicated and too kind of like convoluted for a person who's just going in to know what's going on. Who's Oni? Mm-hmm. Who, who's the NC? What What's going on with uh, with uh, Catherine Halsley? What does she have to do with the Spartan crew? Why does she have this, this, and this? Why is Chief not working on this? Why? How does he know Silver Team? We don't know anything about it even within its own rules and its own world. Mm-hmm. If you're going to talk about the story of the Master Chief, you need to set it from like... All right, here's like a title card. Here's how this character's perspective. Then go through him through training, like kidnapping, mm-hmm. then training, him growing up, his relationship between other crew members. Have it be like a legitimate war story as him growing up and becoming this legendary figure. Or if you want a more a well-rounded universe of Halo, mm-hmm. start with an ODS team. Start them as being a mm-hmm. band of Marines, like a band of brothers. ODST, they get more grizzled. Maybe side characters have, as they get replaced as this Covenant War goes on. Or, if you want to talk about this kind of era, why not choose James Avery? You know, the sergeant from the games. Start him as his early career and see how uh, the UNC is founded. Fuck, if, see what fuck, I mean? If they, followed, if they followed that guy, I would have been all on You see what I mean? Because he's, he's, he he he's one of the best characters. You start him game. off as that character, and he's early on into recruitment. Before, when all of this rebellion mm. stuff is happening, mm. he's coming in, and he gets in, and then he gets in, because of his impressive stuff and his personality, his character, he makes it to a rank where they invite him. Would you like to participate in a program, Sergeant? And he goes, okay. And he's volunteered for this. He becomes this, uh, a uh, Spartan One, part of the Spartan One program. Mm-hmm. And that's the buildup. You can focus from his perspective, see how it gains, and then you can follow other characters in the early days. And then, season two, you bring in Master Chief. And you see how the Spartan Two program is initiated while well, James Avery is still a character. And you see his perspectives and the toll it takes on these characters. Yeah, me, you build I agree with you. There were more... Story. Go ahead, Nick. Yeah, me. I I'm kind of on your on the same side of you. If 
I'm kind of confused what what the target audience is for this adaptation of the show. I think it's it's uh, <clears throat> it does capture the aesthetic of uh, the games at least visually. Mm-hmm. I think visually, you're not going to hear a complaint from me no. on that end with the show. But I think uh, the changes that they make to the lore and the story of Halo, it's so overcomplicated and convoluted. Yeah. Are you trying to like get new audience into into this mythology? And if you are, why'd you complicate it so much with these new elements that aren't in any of the games which again i have no problem of changing story elements from one medium to another sure. what works in a video game might not work in a live action series or film right. but i think this show i think would have benefited from heavily from getting the castlevania treatment it should have gotten this uh just tell this like short form story of that set in this world but take elements from the games but don't directly adapted which i think is something they tried to do here but i think uh because it's been in development hell for so long by the time it finally got any traction they're just like okay just just put it out paramount needs a paramount plus needs a needs a flagship show yeah steven spielberg announced they were going to create this iteration or a similar iteration of a halo tv series it was first thought up all the way with neil blunkoff he did landfall which is a Mm. a collection of three different shorts you can actually watch it mm-hmm. on YouTube. It's about se- actually seven minutes. It's great. You follow a team of ODSTs all the way from the start. Oh, to kind of them. Yeah, even uh, even that uh, they have like a Halo uh, directed video film called a uh, Forward Unto Dawn, which oh, is yeah. fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah. So check uh, check out check out Forward Unto Dawn. Check out like Neil Blancoff's seven minute. Check out the I Believe trailers if you want to watch Halo marketing and get like really involved. I just before I watched any of this, I watched like all of those stuff, mm-hmm. and it got me really excited for this again, and made me realize why Halo exploded the way it did. Its marketing was a plus S tier level of marketing. I still get goosebumps when I watch the the Believe trailer, and I didn't even play yeah, Halo the, back then. Yeah, the yeah, it's like uh, even if you didn't play any of the games you got some of the best game trailers of all time with stuff like how they marketed the halo 2 and 3 and uh, odst and reach yeah Yeah, there's a great trailer for odst called we are odst it starts from a a kid seeing his father pass away in the coffin and it it marks his way all the way through boot camp all the way becoming an odst and it's just like it's not it's it's basically Mm -hmm. like a it's basically a sci-fi Navy SEAL recruitment ad. It is, basically, yeah. <laughs> but you know what? They could have easily put that up in that universe and used that as propaganda in its own series. In their own series, and it would have worked completely. Yeah, and and, all, and it's weird that the marketing back in the day, when all right, it was all right, full screen, Bungie, yeah, on, yeah. Uh, Okay, yeah. Wrap it up. Final moving thoughts, on. Yeah, I, I'm thoughts, moving yeah. on. Moving on, uh, final thoughts. I think the show looks great. I'm curious to see where it goes, but I'm not exactly excited for it. I'll probably wait like until a couple more episodes they are out, then binge it, and then form a real opinion. But as of right now, I'm at a I'm at a stream it. I, I think there's enough cool visually. I think there's enough Easter eggs to the games that it'll please fans of the games, but not really anyone else. Uh I think you know my opinion on it. I would say that if you're intrigued on seeing a Halo series, you're going to have to make a lot of um, know a lot of things ahead of time before you do so. I think it does help knowing that this is non-canon. It does allow them a freedom to go into directions it goes. Whether mm-hmm. the directions it goes is good for Halo and fits within their own story of the characters, that's another sto- that's another topic. But I I would give it a low stream it. Give it a shot. Give it a chance. You might like it. Um, I'm. I need to see more of it to really form a, a super opinion on it. But this is what I've seen mm-hmm. so far. And while the visuals are impressive, the writing, characterization, <laughs> and through line, I think needs some work. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. 